What up my freaks, Ruana Sensite here with part 25 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Imric Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, twas probably one of my favorite episodes of the entire campaign as we had a bunch of difficult battles, culminating culminating in a sort of a very, very close call in between the basic spear and archer army against uh, a elite dark elf army led by Harganeth slash Krone Hellebron. The archers and spears, basically though they were, faced off against black guard, executioners, dread knights, a hydra, oh, a, a black dragon, all led by Hellebron, and still managed to hold. It was fantastic. Uh, but anyway, we got more things to do. More things aplenty because we just have so so many enemies and it does look like with Bretonia having gone the way of the Empire and pretty much been destroyed uh, the um, uh, Ulfwan is now starting to get threatened. There's a lot of stuff on our coastline which is making me quite nervous because we really don't want to lose some of the high tier settlements belonging to our allies as they will get confederated and then we'll have to rebuild them. We may have the technology but I don't know if we have the time. Uh, so to our car is gonna have to return to tier four again which ain't so great and i believe altharian holds the no somebody holds a sort of cane out here i remember seeing the glow oh it's jinquella yes uh yeah, she's probably going to lose the Sword of Cain to Nakari, who has a full stack. I mean, we're probably going to have to send Tyrion up here to deal with all of this, but we will have him in another turn. Now, another thing before we get started on moving everybody around is I gave it some thought, and I realized what I want to do with... Okay, where is she? Uh, with Feodian's army. If we take this entire army and give it to uh, Alistar to command the White Lions... What we can do for for uh, Feodian is this. Hawk Riders from the Wood Elves, and I don't know if it was a patch or whether I'm just blind, but now we have access to Lothurn Skycutters. So we'll combine the Skycutters with a few White Lion units, or War Lion units, and Hawk Riders, and Celestial Lions. Sort of a Lions turning into birds with the Celestial Lions bridging the gap, and the Lothurn Skycutters as well, because I've been excited to get these things going. On top of that, if we get another Exemplar Princess uh, available to us at some point, there's something I've Really want to try. High Elves have so many different chariots available to them. Lion Chariots, Vilmar Chariots, Tyranon Chariots, and Lothan Skycutters. I want to see if we can make an all chariot and nothing else army. I don't know how likely or how effective it would be, uh, but uh, it would certainly have uh, Sirtha Ek, the Ever Chariot, seething with jealousy, and maybe Cetra as well, and frankly all the other chariot factions, because nobody chariots like the High Elves, apparently. Hmm. There's also the possibility of even using the chariots in our Frozen army, in our Lamoreau army, because I don't know how long it'll be until we can get Kislevite units and uh, more Frozen stuff, uh, but we do get the chilling aura out of Lamoreau anyway. Plus, I kind of want to get the uh, dra various dragon armies on field a little bit sooner. Yeah, I'm excited about the sky cutters and other stuff. But anyway, let's uh, let's get started. Let's get started. Uh, Imrek, you are pushing southward towards Agrul Megdalen. Oh, I just realized we're not even at war with uh, with Scarby. You're at war with Camry and the court of Libaras, and you're friends with Clan Scryer and Topknots. Eh? I didn't even realize they were friends with Topknots. Like, who the heck are Topknots fighting? They are fighting Camry and Cult of Sigmar. Okay, well, that'll all be their problem. Uh, we will ask then the Court of Libaras to join the war against the Exiles. Can't get anything out of it except a tiny, tiny amount of gold. But I suppose neither of the Tomb King factions would have given us much gold anyway, so... That's fine. And besides, attacking corn will make everybody else around us uh, like us more, so... You gotta do what you gotta do. Plus, so uh, we can get the landmark at Death Gorge, a hero recruit rank for all heroes, faction wide plus two. Ain't too bad. I resolve this once again. Damage to the Mage of Life for some reason and nobody else. Uh, Atanian Vintner, another Dawnstone, and is it because you're on your bar to the Thilmar Steed, but you basically have the Steed or the Chariot as options? I'm not so sure that the chariot would make you uh, more likely to survive. Let's say anyway. Uh, hmm. I don't think these guys are nearby, but do we risk it? You know what? Sit in Sunken Kurnark for now. I don't want you to get suddenly attacked by rats or by a scurvy. I hope that he's alive, though. Or, well, <laughs> alive is a strong word, but you know what I mean. Uh, hmm. 
Oh, damn. Well, they've got solid defenses at Morgheim. I didn't even realize that. Uh, perhaps I should have pushed Imrik down there instead. Okay, maybe change of plans. I was going to send Imrik around to Def Gorge first and then move to Gorgazan. Maybe do it the other way around so we can move back up to Morgheim and Floating Village. That's a decent amount of stuff here. I mean, I suppose if we move Arwenel down there with the Fire Army, she could deal with that. But I was hoping to send her up here as a, where there's a lot of fighting to be had. But anyway, uh, we'll deal with it when we figure it out. Feodian, you need to move right here-ish. Near Fyldorf, where you can hopefully defend it and heal yourself up from all that attrition and that you've suffered to full because we're in our allied territory. Belagar, keep besieging Steingart. More likely than not, we will be uh, we will be attacking Belagar. Yeah. The thing is, everybody kind of hates Belagar. He broke a, a bunch of agreements with, uh, I believe, with Vissenland and Nuln, and he doesn't like Vissenland and Nuln. He hates us quite a bit, and even Karakadrin doesn't like him very much. Moving to minus 46 because of the... Uh, and because of the broken treaties and the trespasses, and obviously all the Wood Elves hate him, so yeah, Belagar unfortunately has to go. This has kind of been a theme for various campaigns, but, uh, well, it is what it is. Anyway, Recruiter Fern Harvest and Larithiel. Larithiel. Ah, I got it right that time. Uh, you're gonna hit this. Kill off the settlement, or take the settlement for us real quick, out of resolve. Gambler's Armor and Occupy. And I think Lerithiriel will command the army of the... Uh, uh, I keep the food taster. Uh, command the army of our Black Dragon, the undead one. I want to give them a Necro Sphinxes in combination with Shadow Warriors and maybe a Shadow Lore and a Death Lore Mage as well. I think that'll be pretty nice. Uh, kind of on theme, or at least as close as I think we can make it. Enemy Hero Action Success Chance. Oh, I just saw that. Uh, Itanian Vintner. Another Vambraces of Defense. Very nice. Can put that on Eltharion when we get him back up. Blood River Valley secured. Bloody Hands destroyed and... Our victory conditions are now down to the Exiles of Corn, with a lot of good uh, buffs that we'll get once we uh, complete this. Perhaps I should have rushed it a little bit earlier, but, uh, well, I've been having a fun time doing other stuff. Anyway, uh, Lerithiel, do we keep you on the field? Hmm. I mean, I suppose we could have... Wait, <laughs> I just realized. We don't have a way to recruit Shadow Warriors anymore. At least we don't have one here. We can global recruit them, but I think they'll be too expensive, uh, global. 2,000. Yeah, it'll, it'll cost like 800, I think, if we recruit them via stuff. Maybe if we take Def Gorge, it'll be a green territory. Build them up here. I guess it'll be a question of who we actually send them to fight. Hmm. All right, but I guess, Arwenil, that does mean you are moving southward, at least for now, though whether that'll be the case for uh, much longer, we shall see. Oh, wait, should we move this way? All right, fine. Uh, go this way for now. I want to trade Recruiter Fern Harvest stuff to you, and then Recruiter Fern Harvest needs to move back to where she can, you know, recruit. Uh, she's been toting around these units for a long time. Hmm. Although, I just had another idea. If we build up another... I did want another Lothar and Seaguard army just to send out to sea to keep gathering islands. This may be a decent place to get them. Uh... Rekvar is probably going to be upgradable relatively quick. Varenka Hills is ready to go to tier 3, and we would be able to recruit both the Shadow Warriors and the Lothran Sea Guard out of this territory. Potentially. Mm. We can't do it at, uh, we can't do it at Varenka Hills right now, but I kind of like the idea. Alright, go in to rebuild La Splendor. Actually, no, go into Tribute to the Phoenix King, delete the Colonnade, we'll replace it, but we'll temporarily build the, uh, and the Lothurn Sea Garden Shadow Warrior building. Because then we can send them maybe up to the Empire. We're going to need a lot of armies to deal with all of that stuff up there, let's face it. Uh, and they're probably going to start coming south soon. They're already heading towards Ulfon. Anyway. That doesn't mean we can keep these things here rather than recruit them. Arwenil has no real use for them anyway, so I think that's just fine. Rodar. 
You're going to meet Arminal somewhere around Dragonhorn Mines and transfer everything but the Athilmar chariots because she wants the fire damage dealers, both the fire phoenixes and the sisters as well. And then Fern Harvest, I guess you're staying here until you can do a little bit of recruiting. All right. Who's up next? Uh, Erethond, you are going to destroy Lethanara's faction for good, I believe. Do we need to fight this? Let's see what we got. Uh, valiant defeat, you say? Erethond, suffering a valiant defeat. Oh, game. Have you learned nothing? All right. I guess so. Wait. Let's see. Is this a cinematic? It looks like it is. A oh, lovely. Go. Alrighty, here we go. Once again, Erethon stands against an enemy that has absolutely no chance against him. That said, there are a fair few amount of enemies in this particular territory, and uh, we're going to have to slowly but surely work our way through them. We're going to start by knocking the towers down real quick with the uh, quite strong uh, units of Eagle Claw bolt throwers there. And then knock a few holes in the enemy walls. Unlike previous battles, uh, well, most battles where Arathon has besieged the enemy, where we simply clear the walls with, ever with the eagles as much as we can. We're going to do it a little bit differently here and get some work out of the eagle claws and the uh, silver and guard, just so that, uh, that everybody has a chance to play. Anyway, uh, we got two holes in the wall now, and two towers have been brought down. A little bit more bombardment, and we should be good. Just going to speed it up a little bit. Gate is down. Next wall should be down shortly. And we still have plenty of ammunition on our uh, on our Eagle Claws. Also, Talons, Shadow, Raptors, Screech, Silver, and Salvo, the Reapers, and... Oh, I forgot to name one of them. Well, darn. All right. I thought I had named them all. But, uh, yeah, I got to remember to get some more names in here. It's been a couple of episodes. I'll uh, probably do it in... Probably next episode, because I'll forget this time. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna move forward a little bit with those eagle claws and get a few more shots out on the enemy. There are some, uh, there are some phoenix guards standing up on top of the walls, and that's somewhat convenient for us as shots that fail to land on the uh, on the phoenix guard will land behind them over the walls and hopefully kill off a few archers. Beautiful. Now those sea guard ain't helping the rest of the army, or those phoenix guard rather ain't helping the rest of the army. Those poor archers aren't even being targeted. They're just in the way. All right, and it looks like the Phoenix Guard have realized their error and are moving off those walls, but we can still fire over the walls and continue firing into the units uh, that were taking shots from our Eagle Claws and before. And the entire enemy settlement is open to bombardment and by our artillery, especially considering that uh, they don't have a way to fire back with neither tower nor artillery of their own. They do have eagles of their own, I suppose, but we can head towards them ourselves with our own flyers and knock them out. There were a couple of a uh, couple of moments in a few other campaigns where the enemy surprisingly did sally out with all their flyers, and it surprised me every time as it's not behavior that I generally expect from the AI, but uh, it's uh, it's always been a nice surprise and a nice little added bit of difficulty as well. Anyway, enemy units still just milling around unable to do anything while we uh, fly right past uh, these big old ships and get ready to head towards the enemy settlement. And eagles look uh, really nice flying over the, uh, flying over all this stuff. And Erethond will lead the way. Looks like the enemy attempts to uh, land a few arrows on him, but I don't think he cares all that much about it. We'll herald the arrival of the eagles with our fire eagle, which will move through the lines of enemies before we get that aerial ballet as we rip the enemy units apart. The enemy eagles are uh, under the effect of Helm of Discord, while our own eagles have Stand Your Ground, and they're a melee defense up to 87 so no chance that they uh, take any damage and in fact the two units of enemy eagles are already out and destroyed this does mean that the rest of our eagles can land down upon the archers below 
weapon start ripping into them as well. Now we do have to be careful as the enemy army is pretty big. They've got maybe a stack and a half, maybe a little bit of more uh, full of units here. And that means an absolute massive number of enemy range units. Uh, we do send Arathon dead to hunt the enemy lord who is attempting to escape, but that's hardly surprising. And Arathon will swoop down to try to land, but this guy is just going to keep on running. Uh, we do hit him with the Ring of Corin, and we'll keep giving chase. There we go, landing now. Getting a nice hit in, dropping the enemy lord by about 25% of his HP, but he's just going to keep on running. All right, well, I mean, you've got a steed, Arathon's on a uh, on a griffin, you got no chance, you best be running. Uh, out here, we've got some silver and guard and some more silver and guard moving in to help out these spears. And that is a lot of anti-large silver and guard there, so we do have to be a little bit more wary of them, especially without Arathon to uh, lead the eagles. Though the buffs from the crown and the uh, debuffs from the uh, helm and whatnot are available to the noble here, we are starting to take a little bit of damage and Talon Force 1 will have to book it on out of there. And on top of that, we'll uh, buff ourselves up with the uh, armor from uh, the Wissens Wild Form. In the meantime, our Silver and Guard are moving through the walls. We've also summoned two extra units of Eagles. Eagles are known for being extra. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's because they're screeching all the time. Uh, the uh, summoned units of eagles are just going to distract whatever enemy units they can. The bombardment of the eagle claws will herald the arrival of the silver and guard who are now in the enemy settlement and will begin making their way towards uh, the enemy. The units of silver and guard and the rallying enemy eagles have attempted to or are continuing to hold. But how long for? It remains to be seen. At the very least, one of the units of Spears is on the way out. I believe one of the units of Silver and Guard has already been destroyed, and the other one is uh, down to a sliver of HP. Arathon's still chasing the enemy lord around. All this, uh, uh, all these towers and buildings keep getting in his way. But it's also a cool sight to see him swooping down from up on high. Would be nice if that uh, increased your speed considerably. And then catching the enemy lord yet again, hopefully. Okay, well, a couple more hits and the enemy lord will be done for. We gotta remember that Arathon hits really, really hard. And 191 HP left to the enemy lord, 982 weapon strength without buffs, and we should be able to chase him down and destroy him. We should also be a fair bit faster than the enemy lord, so down he will go while his course continues running. You know, Ar Arathon's an animal lover. He wouldn't kill the uh, horse if there is no reason to. Except, uh, and b besides, leaving it alive will maybe help the eagles uh, get a nice meal, should they uh, uh, want to uh, eat an Illyrian steed or whatnot. Anyway, uh, looks like the eagles are joining the Silver and Guard now. Uh, Silver and Guard are chasing enemy archers around. Once again, the enemy army is composed of a lot of range units, but uh, our Silver and Guard should be able to lock them in melee. And to shout decent enough damage to enemy range units. An enemy unit of white lions attempted to hold our tide of uh, silver and guard and eagles up, but were promptly ripped apart uh, by eagle and by spear. And we'll simply move forward to the next pile of the enemy units. There we go, a bloody end for Homer Simpson. I mean, a bloody end uh, for the uh, piles of archers here. Also, I love this settlement. It's a uh, very nice uh, vampire coast stuff going on. Pretty cool settlement to fight in, I think, with all of these uh, little valleys and stuff. Makes the uh, sieges feel a little bit more epic, especially if the enemy has enough of an army to actually uh, force you to uh, go deep into the enemy settlement, as otherwise, I mean... This is why we didn't want to, for example, attack here and kill all the units on the walls, which would have just prompted the entire army to shatter. Made this a little bit more of an interesting battle. Anyway, the eagles continue being the vanguard, though once again some of them have taken quite a bit of damage. In fact, most of them are at about half HP, but it hardly matters. Well, maybe not half HP, but uh, they've taken damage. At least one of them is a half HP, and a couple of the, all oh, the summoned eagles got hurt. These ones are not summoned, and they did take damage. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, that was more than sufficient as the last of the enemy army, you or the enemy units will shatter, and 
the battle will be Arathond's, but I don't think at this point in the campaign any of us had any doubt that Arathond would carry the day. Alright, very, very nice. Minimal losses, primarily two. I don't even know how we got six losses. One, oh, oh, one of the units of uh, the, uh, one of the units of Silver and Guard, but at least the Silver and Guard actually did get to fight this time around, which is, uh, uh which uh, sometimes hasn't happened for this particular army. Now, uh, I do, though, have to point out that while it always looks like the Eagles survive and no damage is taken, uh, the Eagles often do take, like, half damage or sometimes more, sometimes less in every battle. It's just that, uh, we generally are careful enough to pull them out, Slanashi Giggle, uh, uh, when they are low enough in HP and then send them to chase other things around while the more healthy units of Eagles fight. This allows us to maintain the model count and this allows them to heal up post-battle to full rather than uh, losing units. At least uh, that's uh, roughly how we do it. Anyway, uh, another nice fight for Arathon to occupy the place and then what we have to see is this. Hotex column. Uh... Wait, no, not Hotex Column, I'm doing the wrong thing. Uh, the Twisted Glade, how much is it worth to you? 57, how much is the Black Forest worth to you? 74, okay. We're gonna give you the twi- Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 I gotta, I'll figure this out, I'll figure this out, give me a minute. What we want to do now... Hmm, I was originally gonna send... Uh, somebody still has to go for the Black Light Tower, freaking heck. Hmm, on the other hand... Here, here was the plan. Uh, I want to trade Shrine of Cain to them. Maybe we have to wait for a couple of turns. I'd like to get Shrine of Cain ASAP, but if uh, Nakari is out here... You know what? I guess we could send Terathon to kill off Nakari as well. Just briefly. Which would allow us to... Hmm. Massively speed up the army. You know, who needs more speed? The eagles. <laughs> oh, the idea amuses me. Uh, but anyway, for now... I guess stay here. Oh, we may have to move down here. Tyrion can always go out here, go after the lizards. He should also knock Noctilus out, most likely, because we're, otherwise we're just going to have to keep on dealing with him forever. And uh, that's not necessarily what we want. Anyway, uh, let's keep Arathon there. We'll trade for the Shrine of Cain with this stuff next turn. I'm just not going to bother deleting anything or rebuilding anything. We have almost enough money to make the trade work, as we saw with the Black Forests on last episode, before we took the Twisted Glade or whatever it is. Anyway, until now, you're up and no, uh, Bill Harithoi is up next. Oh, right. Bill Harithoi, you were supposed to auto resolve the remains of this stuff here. Come to Noble Prestige and auto resolve this. Bit of damage on the Illyrian Reavers, but at least they didn't get destroyed and occupy Harganath at tier 3. Lovely. And <laughs> if we wanted to, we could replace your uh, stuff with the uh, stuff out of the War Hall, but I don't think there's a need. Uh, this is a tier 5, but having captured a tier 3 isn't so bad. Harganeth and the Road of Skulls is probably the limit of the territories that we want up here. The rest we want to give to Kotep, if we only we can actually get him to capture some stuff. It looks like he's going to try to move to Blacklight Tower, but I don't think this army is going to be strong enough to take it, because this is a very wacky army. And unlike the uh, tomb, well, unlike the high hills, rather, the tomb king's chariots aren't good enough to make a chariot-only army, generally speaking. Uh, Talisman of protection, Argonath destroyed. Lovely. Kind of interesting that in the uh, Katep campaign, Argonath will be vassal, and in this one, well, they're gone. Well, I mean, maybe not interesting, just uh, uh, exactly expected for the high elves. But anyway, hmm. I guess we go after these, maybe before Kotep. He is at war with the Decadent Hill, so he could easily take some of these territories. But honestly, if he takes a few of them up here, it won't be so bad. We also need to deal with you, Garrulous Cool. And with all of this nonsense, we may have to build sort of like a basic stack here. You know what? I think we've no choice, in fact. Uh, let's get an Archmage of... I'm gonna say life again, probably. 
Another incompetent one. Uh, it doesn't really matter, it's just that we need a caster to be able to both do damage and heal and just command a basic army to sort of move up here and take stuff without having a proper army do it for us. So, let's do you. You're not gonna... This is just going to be an auto-resolve army. I just want some units in here. And start recruiting at least a few high elven archers. I, were they always this expensive? A thousand gold? Just for regular high elven archers? I mean, I guess they're good, if nothing else. Uh, and we want to switch to rally citizen militia for the local recruitment capacity. Otherwise, it's going to take you too long to build anything up. Also, I should have built three archers rather than two. Also, do collect the income. Yes, okay, good, good, good. All right, who's up next? Until now, I believe you were next. And you are going to move up here to try to cut off Azazel. We don't want him coming down here. I guess you can go right to the edge of our territory, but not into Karakazor because it's full of Skaven. If Azazel keeps on marching this way, we'll take advantage of it. If he doesn't, we'll push you up towards Karak Hearn once we attack, uh, attack Bilogar. And I guess we can use this as a sort of a military uh, a military starting point, a muster point, whatever, uh, for our retaking of the Empire and giving all of its territory to Vissenland, who have confederated Karl Franz. Alright, Teclas, hey, you. You're going to go down to the Castle of Splendor here. Castle of Splendor. Uh, and, uh, yeah, ooh. Tic Tac, go for it, please, please do, sir. I would really appreciate it if you actually took that, but I fear that your basic skink army might not be able to. Maybe with a little help from this army? Who knows? Who knows? Alright, and we'll deal with it if we uh, have to. Uh, Gwyndian and uh, you're fine. Larician. Now I wanted to say- oh, actually, Morella. Quickly kill off this. Wait, go into... It's noble prestige. I'll resolve this to death. Hopefully it won't be too much damage. Yeah, a little bit of damn. Huh, spears got hurt. Uh, they're the only melee units in here after all, and you can take, I guess, the influence. Ah, campaign movement range. Swell, Morella, swell. Armor of the Stars, back into Karan Kar, and I guess build a few more troops via global recruitment. Oh wow, global recruitment is barely more expensive than local. In fact, high elven archers cost the th exactly the same in global than they do in local? What the heck? Oh, here, okay, here they're slightly cheaper. It's in the other settlement. They were more expensive. All right, fair enough. Uh, what do you... Eh, I think you're fine. At least for now. We're not going to use this as an army, at least not yet. Though, at this point, I'm starting to think Morella's been pulling off a few things, and we may have to give her an army. And gotta reward the... Uh, gotta reward all the effort. Now, Larician. Alright, so there's several things I would like, in theory, to do with you. There's a lot of ways we could push you. A, we could push you to Conquata and the Citadel of Lead in the Isle of Wights, or we could push you down here where all of this is nonsense is happening, but if Erathon goes down here, we can maybe push you here to take Slaver's Point and then hunt whatever is here, including Siggy. I fear Siggy's gonna just go around us and attack Hagri for something we may have to use Bill Harithoi to deal with him, but uh, we'll see. All right, so I guess that does mean you're going to go here, but we also have to watch for you dying, Wendrina. You should be safe here. Wait. Nah, okay, you, you can't reach us here, can you? I don't think so, but just in case, we'll keep you two together. Oh. Eh, I'm sure you'll be fine. I hope I don't come to regret this. I'm going to give Wendrina some spells just in case. Uh, the thing is, these guys might gain movement range if they uh, set sail, and that's what has me concerned. Ah, uh, but they do get stuck by Larishian, so they're fine. And thus you will be fine as well, but we will give you Root Marcher. Oh. Yeah, basically no spells, because I used all your stuff on Master Strategist and Bowmaster, which will be fine if we actually give you an army at some point. Oh, wait, no, you are, you are a confed, weren't you? I definitely don't remember doing that. You're just toting these around until Tyrion uh, comes back anyway. Alistar. Alright, wait. Architect, do you need to build anything? No, I think we did the building last episode. Alistar, you. Now, you have some forces, some of which have to go to... Hmm... Alright, I'd like you to grab the Sea Corpse, but I don't want you necessarily to do it yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push you out here. Not so close that uh, Noctilus can attack, yeah? 
Although even if he does, you'll be fine. All right, fine. Just uh, stay in our own territory so we heal. Oh, actually, would we heal more here? Let's find out. No, heal the exact same. All right, uh, just just get as close to this as you can. Just make sure not to lose your... Uh, not to lose your Exalted Illyrian Reavers. The rest of the stuff we don't really care about. Uh, you're going to go here. You're going to grab this. this. Oh. I just realized. Gentleman Jenkins might attack us. But his army is relatively weak. So even if he does, I'm sure he'll be fine. Uh, or at least this army will be fine. Because it's going to have to be fine without you. Let's get Chain Lightning on you. That'll help out a lot, but Alistar himself will now get reset. So, sir, you get your Merchant Lord. I don't know if this will work, and that will... Let's see. 27941. He's free because he's legendary, right? Yeah. 27941. Reset skill points, yes. 27941. No, okay. So, while he's reset, they do reset immediately, not when uh, he revives. I just wanted to know. Uh, we probably don't need another mage in this army since we have one being toted around at the current time. Just get, like, a basic prince of some kind. Squishy prince, melee defense, uniped, speed reduction. Eh, you're a fire mage, and you're also more expensive. Slovenly upkeeper. No, that would be not good. All right, another princess soft carted missile strike. Oh, for the love of. <laughs> That's not great either. Uh, you're a melee attack reduction. Don't care about meddler. Why is there like a million mages and not that many princes? All right, try this again. Disorganized? No. Unfortunate. Missile resistance for you personally? I don't like it. Squishy. Oh, all of them are kind of meh. All right, fine. Let's get uh, let's get the princess. Like, well, no, let's get a prince. Hmm. Okay, okay, enough of the enough of the mages. Uh okay, that's another princess. Melee attack reduction. The reason I'm thinking so hard about this is because if the if Noctilus attacks us, then we'll actually have to fight this battle, and thus we need a you know proper uh, proper unit. You know what? You're never actually going to com command anything, so I think we'll just get you disorganized and you're obviously going to be deleted in like a turn or so, so just do it. Even if you cost us more money than I'd like. Order is there you go. And, though you will fight, we will get your Merchant Lord. There we go. To bring our money back from uh, not having Merchant Lord on Alistar anymore. Alright, and just try to survive potential attacks from all of these guys. Alright, that looks good. We're recruiting uh, the... Trekin and some gate guard as well. The gate guard are gonna go to Tyrion, who will be up next turn. Who needs to also move this turn? Didrarus, you are move where you are. The growers don't need to move right now. The disciples are waiting for Teclas. They are Teclas's disciples, and there will be three of them in his army, though he already has the first stand. That looks like that's that. All right, do we need to recruit anything else anywhere? We've got uh, archers and stuff coming in over here. We can't afford enough sky cutters, but we want to wait until the commandment changes anyway. So I believe we're good. I don't think we're sieging anything, or if we are, I don't remember where it uh, uh, where it is. So, skip this, and assign skill points, building upgrade available, outpost available, uh, outpost upgrade available, hero not moved. I'm pretty sure I moved all the heroes between the episodes, as there's too many influencers now, just like in real life. And uh, the uh, uh, they just keep grabbing influence from everything. And I don't want to do that on screen, because it's a waste of time. All right, let's see what Stig Aisling does. Maybe the Sisters of Twilight will go after him. Setra wants some military access. No. More likely than not, Setra will get into a fight with all the lizards and we'll have to ignore him. And unfortunately, since we're military allies with the lizards, uh, we'll probably get drawn into it. Which is a shame, but Imric needs something to do. At least while he's down there, and while he's waiting for uh, Scarby to come back. Stig will offer the love of all these little undefended territories. We don't really care about them since we were going to trade them away, but it's uh, annoying to have to chase this guy down. Out of resolve. Actually wanted to... Hmm. All right. Are you at war with... Uh... Oh, no. Kata probably will take the monoliths. Oh, actually, they're not at war. Never mind. Sisters of Twilight are also not at war with these guys. Interesting. Faction destroyed, Harbinger of Disaster. Hmm. Settlement lost the monoliths, that's fine. We were going to trade it anyway. Undercity discovered at uh, Shalantzek. And Constructor, Constructor. J address ready, Tyrion ready. Technology researched, more money. And... And we'll start with you, Tyrion. 
All right, uh, I guess since you're getting these gate guard, we can start you up right here, because we can send you on a mission to obliterate the Galleon's graveyard. You... Oh, I guess we just replace you with Tyrion. Oh, wait. Grab this real quick. I also want to keep an eye on what's going on out here. Bellacor, ah, he's going to take Torcarali. We can't do anything about it, though. Are these guys at war with them also? Damn, Altharion, you are in trouble, good sir. There's a lot of enemies back here. Okay, Arathon, you're needed. If anybody can deal with all this, it's Arathon. Uh... And would it be faster to go by sea or by land? As in, keep going by sea like this or land like right here on the Shrine of Cain. That's then might try to attack us, but either way. Uh, Arathond, I guess you're going this way, which will mean Larishian will have to deal with Blacklight Tower. These guys will revive most likely. But it is what it is. Get down here. All right, and now you should be close enough to the Shrine of Cain for us to be able to trade it to these guys. So, Twisted Glade to Katep. Or, we want a military alliance with him. Ah, more legions. And we want you to join war against... All right, let me just see here. Not the Ecstatic Legions. We could do Winter Tooth, and then he'll just start attacking this, and I'm not sure that we want that, as I wanted these territories to go to the Wood Elves. Uh, he's at war with everything up here. Is there anybody I actually want him to fight? Sorrel, Ecstatic Legions. We could have him fight Nakari, but then I, I don't want him taking more ter territory back here. Clan Pestilence, the Thousand Maws, the Blessed Dread, Disciples of Hashut, Tallyman, Exiles, or just money. Ah, just give us all your money. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Kotep is strength rank 2? How did that happen? Ah, go figure. Well, that's really interesting, uh, especially considering we're running Kotep at the same time, but uh, <laughs> go figure. All right. Uh, here, take the Twisted Glade and get us the Military Alliance. Then. Then. Like so. Trade us the Black Forests for the Shrine of Cain. And a little bit more money. Beauty. Alright, we got the Shrine of Cain now. Thank you, Katip. I really appreciate it. Uh, then we can immediately... Okay, that's Torgrin now. Uh, we can delete the Farrier here and... I guess the White Lion building. And we'll build probably a Lothurn Sea Guard location and another... Uh, yeah, a, lot of, a, a gate guard garrison as well as the Shrine of Cain. Just got to make this place basically impossible to take by anything. I serve the king. As it is kind of out here. And I want to do the same thing on Conquata. Just sort of wall the place up and uh, make it untakeable. Anyway. You, ooh, wait. Wendrian. Wendrina, rather. Nah. I was hoping that she could land at Slaver's Point for us, but it doesn't look like it's possible. Uh, you're going to go here. And we'll let it resolve this. And retake it. This is also another place that we'll probably have to wall up. And I guess immediately build the haven here. Go for the construction reduction, and uh, we'll wait on the promenade. Hmm, in fact, maybe we should replace this immediately with a uh, gate guard garrison and a uh, defensive structure as well. What we really need is an invocation of a Surian, two turns, to reduce the uh, construction times of all this. Morella, you're fine, or at the very least we'll keep you building stuff. Well, let's start from the top again. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I forgot. Tyrion. Uh, let's pop this army. I want to get Tyrion on the field immediately. Because he has reductions and stuff. Loot the carcass, out of resolve yes. And take the influence and money. Come on, materials at sea. Give me materials at sea. Nope, nothing. Damn. Oh, money. Not nothing, but still. Then you could land here, sir. Uh, you have no stuff, you have nothing that we need to get out of this, meaning we can now replace you with Tyrion. Beautiful. Tyrion on the field. We're going to go with Majesty of Ulthuan through to Unifier, partly because we want the control for all provinces. There are Diplo, with rel Diplo relations with High Elves, as it will allow us to... Uh, as it will allow us to do a bunch of things, and the upkeep reduction. And by a bunch of things, I mean, you know, confederate. Then we want the gate guard buffs, because he's going to have at least some gate guard. We want him to... Ah, wait. Do any of these dedications buff silver helms? I don't think so. He's going to have some phoenix guard. I'm probably just going to give him the regiment of renown of phoenix guard as well. But probably not a lot of phoenix guard. Maybe like three. 
I mean, since, I mean, <laughs> it would be funny if he got the dedication to Kane as an option. But anyway, uh, a root marcher, let's go a righteous cause. Oh, I want to see how much this upkeep reduction does for us. 27,400. Down to 30k. And on top of that, we have five turns until falls and with another 8% reduction. Beautiful. All right. A sense of urgency and unifier. Sure. Sure, Tyrion. <laughs> Malekith's the real unifier. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Uh, Korhandir's Descendants. Charge bonus, and... Why did I want to give him buffs for... Oh, because he has Silver Helm Reduction. Okay, okay, okay. I was wondering why I wanted to give him Silver Helms, and that's why. Anything else powers up his Silver Helms? I mean, we still aren't always ready for him. I think we'll dedicate him to a Surian. More speed, if nothing else. And then we'll go through Inspiring Presence, get at least one point in Sword Player. Combined Elites gives him... Oh! Wait, what? Is this a different... It's a different buff for him. Oh, that's interesting. He buffs Silverhelm as a Lyrian Re... Oh, this is perfect. Oh, that's great. I mean, we still probably want to get Bowmaster to power them up further, but uh, this is quite nice. Unless, nobody else has changed to that, right? I just want to see. No, yeah, you have Militia Master rather than Combined Elites. Plus six, plus six, and Illyrian Reavers and Silver Helms aren't normally uh, uh, part of this thing, but I'm happy that they are. This, however, does mean that he doesn't have a separate Horse Master trait. They've just been combined into one. Which, fair enough. All right. Uh, then, we'll probably want Bowmaster. Master. Or his gate guard. He's not going to have many, like four of them. He's frankly going to have a fairly varied army, which is, I think, going to be nice. Oh, and we'll want Master Strategist for the Phoenix Guard, but uh, Bowmaster first. And we'll make him a fighter, but the thing is, even without getting him any new stuff, he'll be a strong fighter anyway. Also, you need a Herald of Mathlan, or whatever with Mathlan. And let's get you a Razor Standard for your stuff. You already have magical damage. We could give you Banner of the World Dragon to give you spell resistance, in theory. We don't need the Bard on you directly, and we don't need the Raven Keeper, probably. Or a Food Taster. Banner of Illyrian's not bad. Oh, he does. Oh, no, he does have Strider on his own. Meaning, this is probably not as needed. Horn of Isha's reload skills, so I think that'll have to go to another army. War Banner, Banner of Illyrian, Banner of Eternal Flame. Might be a decent option on him. Yeah, I like that. And that makes sense to me. And I think we're good for now, other than Herald of Mathlan. I might give him some more stuff, but if the Banner of Eternal Flame goes on Tyrion himself. Anyway, uh, next up, you have to keep recruiting from Alariel, because we have a limited number of these guys that we can get. Okay, well, we'll get three. And we're out of Allegiance. And we'll be looking to confederate her ASAP. We are climbing in terms of our relationship as well. Tyrion and our new landmark down in the Bitter Bay is helping out as this gives us um, 20 relations with High Elves as well and more campaign movement range, which you can never say no to. Anyway, back to Tyrion for a second. Sorry, guys, a little bit of admin this time around, but uh, sometimes has to happen. Now, all of this isn't needed in your army. And I'm, while a little bit hesitant to delete it, unnecessary right now. Okay, I'm not accidentally deleting the U yet, no. I don't, just to double check, I don't think any of these guys are needed in here. No, 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 because he'll have his two exalted Illyrian Reavers. Oh, we should send him out here. Okay, wait, wait, let me just see about this. Uh, disband this. Yes. Then... Start recruiting your Silver Helms. Are we collecting income? Yeah, okay, fine. We'll do, let's say, two and two. Two Silver Helms with swords. Two Silver Helms with lances. Yeah, quite uh, solidly buffed. Hmm, maybe we should give him six. Now, nah, but then he'll have the Exalted Delirian Reavers, which can act in melee as well, so there's not a real need. Uh, how much would it cost to globally recruit one of these guys? Uh, it'll cost three turns. Hmm. And double the money. I guess we just wait. And we just switch you to Rally Citizen Militia. Well, frankly, if we have to wait another turn, we can just do it next turn then. Or even have Melendai do it for us, but, uh, well. 
It doesn't really matter over much. Anything else we need to give him? Okay, so once again, I'm just trying to remember what we want from him. He wants Phoenix Guard, he wants Silver Helms, he wants his Exalted Units, uh, he wants his Gate Guard. No, I think that's it. We just have to wait until we can recruit them. Alright, fair enough. Fair enough. Tech, next tech. We have Hardwood Construction available. Which is a decent choice. We also... I have been wanting to get Sanctioned Expedition because we are still moving around a lot in enemy territory. Global Recruitment Capacity plus one could be helpful. Here on Lord Recruit Rank, Campaign Line of Sight. It's not horrible, but is it worth 5,000 gold right now? You know, let's start on Hardwood Construction since we're ramping up the Chariot numbers that we're using. We also want to move through to the Anuli Roosts as soon as possible as well. I don't really care about the construction or the uh, cost reduction of Reavers and Silver Helms, mostly because while we will have some, we won't have a lot. We need to get to tier 5 to get more uh, uh, more of our uh, better cav. Anyway. Defender of the Phoenix Throne. Arwenel, you're going to hit Morgheim, and thus you're going to go this way into non-attrition territory. Like so. Alright, Recruiter Fern Harvest, stay there until you're ready to recruit more units, and we'll... Oh, you're in the wrong territory, ain't ya? Well, I guess if Larithiel can... Hmm. Okay, I guess that'll be a question. Where do we send Larithiel? Uh, you will probably need to keep an eye on the Skaven and steal their tech, or... Maybe annoy the... Uh... Move in with the vampires up here. Okay, Larithiel. Assuming that we build the up, ooh yes, Doc Karaz, we need the freaking salt. Well, the salt thing has to give us a gives us a really good uh, uh, preserved seafood growth plus ten and income from ports plus ten. We just haven't had salt. This needs somewhere to be upgraded so that we can actually build it. But anyway, you will you already have furs. Yeah, start building the militia camp here at Doc Karaz. And I guess we'll send Fern Harvest to there. Larith... Ah, oh, damn, I pronounced it wrong the other time again. You... I mean, I guess both of you need to be here. Alright, fine. You go to Beric Var, you go to Doc Karaz. Oh, because we're gonna build her, her shadow units. And we're gonna probably send the dragon her way afterwards. Alrighty, that looks good, Emmerich. Alright, sorry about all the admin, but it is necessary to prepare for more armies. You have to get to Def Gorge. And I guess we'll go for Def Gorge first. I don't know where Scarby is, but frankly, do we really care if he takes back Agrul Migdal? I don't think we do. Go here. Find us a Scarby. Take attrition if you must. Scarby? Nope. Uh, you can go into channeling. I keep forgetting how few units this guy has, but frankly, there's not that much at Def Gorge anyway, so... Shouldn't matter over much. Oh! Go back here, wait, are you able to transfer him the chariots? You are, though I fear the auto resolve will probably try to kill them off. But for now, Emmerich's gonna get the stuff that has to go to the Cold Army until the Cold Army is ready to separate itself, and same thing with our Black Dragon Army. Didrarus, you, I believe, are no longer needed here. You don't have anything useful? No, you do not. Alright, goodbye. Uh, you know what? Reset your skill points. Oh, wait. You have only the one skill point. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Alright, that's just faster. We only use these guys as ferrying units, and frankly, I feel like you should have the ability to move units without lords anyway. It's a little bit silly that you need to spend ludicrous amounts of money on an unnecessary lord. Hey! White Lions, it is time at last for you to go. I... Azazel? They're moving away from Atilnai, how dare you? Alright, fine, Atilnai. You are going here. And we're going to kill Beligar. And with Feyadin, then take these territories and then start her on reclaiming the... Uh, reclaiming the realms, but not those realms. Anyway, Steingart, or rather this guy, you're at war with Scryer and Sylvania, and you're allied with no one. A little sad, but we won't uh, we won't make an agreement with Scryer, so we're doing this instead. Feyadin kill. Call your allies to help? Uh, eh, there's no need. Futile. Futile? Yeah, we'll see about that. Weaver of spells. Have you met Feyadian Belagar? I'm not sure that uh, futile is quite the right word. Uh, Alliance Standard Immunity Psychology. She has a war banner, which frankly isn't super useful on her. The lion isn't immune to psychology. Oh, well, you can have a lion banner. The celestial lion, I mean. And I uh, believe... Oh! 
The light- wait, huh? White lions themselves are immune to psychology, but the chariots are not. And the war lines are not. Well, I suppose if the war lines are not, it makes sense that the chariots pulled by the lions would be likely to rub. But anyway, uh, we're good to go. Let's see. Alrighty, here we go. A turn before Alistair comes back. We'll have Feyadian be the one to debut the line. Uh, the line. Uh, the army of white lions. Should be a pretty good time, and their armor sundering great axes should bite into good. dwarfen armor slash gromril uh, with uh, great effect. Lovely to see these guys on the field at the last, and this is just the beginning of our use of them in our campaign. Granted, we've seen the Pure Main Company before, but now we've also got the regular White Lines, the Warline Chariots as well. Which look like a pretty fantastic unit. Aesthetics-wise, it's a very, very nice-looking unit. Although, everybody dressed in white in the entire uh, army. <laughs> Man, everybody's gonna be spending days and getting all the uh, uh, getting all the stains out of everything. But anyway, there's Rahagra's Pride. Is their armor any different? I think it's the same kind of armor, just uh, the uh, slightly... Re oh, actually, no. They do have a slightly different armor. Or do they? No, it's just a randomization of armor type. But anyway, uh, looking pretty good. In the meantime, Feyadin will start the battle off as she usually does. As we know from what we've seen before of Feyadin, she could probably kill the entire army by herself. And she has done such things before. However, uh, the only thing that we want her to do this time around is to destroy the enemy artillery pieces. Um, bolt throwers, uh, the uh, grudge throwers, the other grudge throwers, and the flame cannons, just so that our white lions can approach without taking too much damage. Granted, I suppose we could have just moved the uh, white lions and, uh, or the war lions and the war lion chariots, and then hit them from the back. Or lion chariots, whatever. Uh, but it's fine. And it's fine, and there we go, I believe we've cleared out, well, if not completely done a lot of damage to those artillery pieces, and our noble and our celestial lion as well are gonna move on in. All right, looking pretty good, Dan. You'll fit right in. Your mane, at least, will be stained by blood in relatively short order. And uh, we'll see about that as well. Anyway, I'm uh, going to move on in with the Noble. Noble's going to come down, and we're going to try to quickly force uh, this unit of flame cannons to rout before the enemy army reacts. While Feodian continues to A, drop spells on the remaining artillery crew from above, but also trying to chase down that unit of gyrocopters with troll hammers. Grudge thrower slash short grudge thrower. Uh, grudge settler troll hammer units of the... Uh, the gyrocopters are very, very scary units, and we really shouldn't let them live. Anyway, the celestial line has arrived, exploding some of the enemy crew. And it's going to take care to make sure that the rest aren't able to come back and fire at the white slash war lines at all. Ooh, nice hit from those four units of gyrocopters, taking about 25% HP off of uh, Feyadin. And oh, huh, I never noticed that these are like, home, that they're like homing missiles. Cool. Cool, but quite painful for Feyadin, though she should be able to out-regrowth it. Uh, she's also dealing damage to herself with the Forbidden Rod, but that's all right. Anyway, most if not all, by the looks of it, all the enemy artillery has now been taken care of, and so it is time for the White Lions and War Lions to join the fray. Celestial Line being the first line to do the work, and by the looks of it, some Iron Drakes and Blasting Charges are going to hit our line of uh, White Lines as they move in. However, and by the looks of it, they survived it fairly well. I just want to point this out. Uh, pause it for a second. So, War Lines, because of their Line Pelt, have 40% missile resistance. If we combine it with the... Uh, uh, if we combine it with the Shield of Thorns, their missile resistance goes up to 84%. Yeah, 84%, which is pretty darn crazy. And that's probably why they took barely any damage from those Grudge Settler Iron Drakes. Anyway, they're going to make their way in. Here come the regular white lines as well. Going to run down some rangers with decent ease, especially with Rahagra's Pride leading the way. 
and the chariots will join them. Probably a little bit of overcommitment in terms of unit numbers for a single unit of rangers, but it'll basically route instantly from getting charged. And we got more lions where that came from. Lions for days. Lines of lions, I should say. Anyway, ooh, there is an enemy, uh, there is an enemy goblin hewer here for now, and it is firing together with the uh, unit of grudge settlers into our pile of white lions here, who have lost about 30% of their uh, HP, but not a single unit, which is a little bit surprising where the, uh, where the goblin hewers are concerned. And there we go, laying into those dwarf warriors, with, or the uh, quarrelers, rather, as the war lines charge them into the back. Damn. <laughs> that unit of quarrelers is basically done. Beautiful. Most of the enemy units are now engaged. Love seeing that celestial lion hovering overhead as well. And by the looks of it, this battle will be ours rather quickly. This Thane is also getting absolutely ripped apart. I mean, armor-piercing, armor-sundering damage, probably a pretty solid uh, way to knock out enemy dwarf lords and Thanes and general heroes. Especially when they do get themselves surrounded like this. Anyway, I do believe with that already, pretty much the entire army is gone. Our uh, chariots and our beasts are hunting whatever units are down that have not shattered. And we just have to break the units that are unbreakable, which is Belagar's Ghost Pals. Feyadien now with the Noble and going after the enemy gyrocopter. The Noble did drop to below half HP fighting Belagar, uh, but uh, we uh, just healed them right back up. And there we go. Such a lion looks fantastic. It definitely fits in well with this army. And considering uh, we uh, needed a couple single entities here, I uh, do think it uh, worked out well. I mean, uh, he. Well, we won't probably have these guys in. Uh, uh, in. Hmm. I was about to say we won't have them in Alistar's army, but now I'm kind of... I don't know, I kind of like it. Maybe if we just keep two in his army? And... yeah, but then I kind of like the idea I had about uh, keeping them with Feyadin instead. I don't know, I'll think about it. Feyadin can still have war lines. And they'll still um, be nice and matchy with the uh, Celestial line, but also the birds as well. But anyway, uh, looks like the Ghost Spells are the only thing that's left to Belagar, and the rest of his army is long shattered. And now we just have to work on destroying these guys. King Lun Iron Hammer, 250 HP. Massive physical resistance due to his etherealness and his unbreakable stat, but it won't be enough as he will drop. And I do believe with that, the- oh, no, there is another ghost spell. Hulk and Half uh, is still alive. Well, okay, alive's a strong word. He's still on field, but it won't be for too much longer either. And uh, the Noble and Fadian both have magical attacks, so that is quite helpful. And Social Lion and does not, however. Anyway, with that, Belagar's army is done, and so the debut of the White Lion army, their first battle, is complete. Great little fight, but we can expect a lots and lots more, as we've got an entire empire to reclaim. Alrighty, there we go. Wasn't expecting to debut the White Lion Army against Belagar here, but uh, or the dwarfs in general, but, uh, uh, well, there we are. And fortunately for Belagar, that is a pretty big portion of the strength of his faction, so he's pretty screwed, I'd wager. And any territory that we take here below the mountains will be gifted to the Empire. Nice job, Feodina. The uh, White Lions did pretty darn well. I saw several of them taking, uh, taking shots from the enemy flamethrowers, the grudge settler iron drakes, add that to the face like absolute champs, so well done to them. Uh, good job to the celestial line, which didn't take much damage at all, and by the looks of it, the war lines did a little bit better than the chariots. That said, war line numbers are a little bit inflated because they were also used to chase enemy troops down a little bit more than the chariots were, who didn't have a lot to do once the enemy infantry had routed, and uh, we just had to kill off the ghost pals and such. 
so yeah we'll uh, we'll get more action out of him later and anyway, we'll occupy the place uh, like so and the subterranean stuff really doesn't matter for Feyadian, but uh, anyway and all right uh, more beard weavers that's fine that's actually great we were running out of oh damn I didn't mean to take your shrieking blade uh, we have billions of them I gotta I gotta transform some of the uh, common items into uh, green items so that we can distribute them but for now for now we're fine and the rest of you are good right oh Feijin we'll probably give you a weapon but maybe a weapon if we can find one that allows you to dish out some kind of damage I like uh, I like your ability to use various spells from various lords anyway as somebody pointed out in the comments and I uh, kind of stuck with it I also just realized something okay who okay I, I got a little bit worried that I had accidentally reset to Alistar now or not reset him but just kicked him but he'll be back in two turns so we're looking good uh hmm. yeah there's defenders of McDowell and Galbrack I was wondering whether we should just send Feyadien off by herself to make maybe take Grenstadt or something but it uh, it shouldn't matter over much anyway let's keep going Bell Herathoi where did Siggy go? Where is Siggy now? Ow. He is indeed sailing. Hmm. Maybe a sh Oh. But he is at war with Kotep. Yeah, but Siggy will probably destroy Kotep. What we could do... Ah, oh, man, there's... There's a couple issues here. With Bel Herathoi. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before we move anybody else, we should move the influencers around, because uh, if we don't, it might occur that we... Oh. You're a tech thief, not an influencer, but close enough. Uh, steel tech for you. And I guess block army would still be useful, but we probably want to move into the various blessings here for your hero success chance. Influencers, let's move you. Failure. Come on, man. Come on. Once again, I uh, want to move these guys around. Standing by. So that if we take settlements, so then uh, they will have, they were already moved and uh, don't have to be moved again. Hey, you go to Iron Frost, please. You're still recruiting and I'll deal with you later. Possibly this episode, possibly next episode, all depending on... Hey, success, good job. You didn't level. Really? You were just recruited and you didn't level on your first success. Come on, man. Come on. Try a little harder, please. Uh, you go to Black Fang. More... Whoa, 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 whoa. what? 40% hero wounded. Do you not have... No, you have the Beard Weaver and the Food Taster. Oh, no, not, not, not allied territory. 6%. All right, fine. Maybe this is better. So just try not to die. D Did you say destruction? destruction? Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, securing influences destruction quite, but uh, why not? Why not? You keep telling yourself that. Disciples, growers, you don't have to move right now. Tech thieves, you however do. And steal some from Shlantzik. Like so. 100% success chance as well. Well done, Tech Thief. Tech Thief 2. Elven Boogaloo. Uh, Larian. Hmm. I mean, you'd be able to move up here, but this guy would run or he'd attack you while you were moving up there, so you'd probably need to recruit. And, yeah, might as well do it now. 4 and 4, that should be enough to destroy this army. My lord, they're expensive. And might get more out of global recruitment for you, but I'm not sure that we want to do that right now or not. Larishian can't move anymore. Yeah, we have to be very careful about how we uh, deal with all of this. And Aerothon... Oh, you can move a little bit further. Go hunt Nakari down, please. And... Bellacore and everything here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff for you to do here, let's face it. In fact, I'd love for you to duel Nakari and Bellacore. And, oh no, Nakari's been defeated by Jinquella, the uh, uh, sort of cane wielder. Damn you, Jinquella. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jay Quellen. We, we should just call her Jay Quellen. Uh, anyway, uh, Indomitable, full plate armor, Woundmaker, what do you got next? That's the word of Koweth. You might occasionally get hit with Melkoth's mystifying miasmas from Bellacor, so why not? Syrian, you're only here to transfer these gate guard. But I guess you have to land to do that. Tic Tac is unwilling to take Castle of Splendor. Or, well, unwilling. Mm. Are you guys able to reach it in a turn? You are not. I mean, you would in March stance, but I'm not sure that I want you to take any more attrition, so we can wait. That's fine. You're gonna go right here. And Gwyndian, you are going to follow. And then you, Syrian, are going to land and try to follow along, sort of, as well. 
almost tempted to not land Teclas just because... I mean, we could put him out here and take one of these places. These guys should theoretically have enough armies to be able to take it, and even if they can't, we can sack it for them and just take it that way. It's probably the way to do it. Alright, Teclas, you're gonna go over here then and go all the way out here for the altar facades. You can grab the shipwreck on your way back. I prefer it that way. Plus, if you land here, we can take a few turns to recruit you some phoenixes and some uh, Lothern Seaguard. If you find a Skull Island on the way, we could actually get you a fight, theoretically. Bill Harithoi, back to you. <laughs> I'm laughing because I uh, was wondering what to do with you. And uh, Yeah, the problem is Siggy. As always. And the problem with Siggy is that if we leave him here... Probably go for these places, and I really don't want him going after Hag Grief. I think we'll try to bait him into attacking Belharathoi. So you're gonna go right here and block him up. Ah, oh, but what if he lands at Harganeth? Actually, that shouldn't be an issue. Go here. Go here. We'll see if he runs or not. It'll be a waste of a turn for Belharathoi, but uh, honestly, at this point, I'm pretty confident in her army's capabilities. Basic or not. Uh, Ar Architect Luaran, you were being sent to the Dragon Isles on this, I'm mistaken, so keep going there. See a mysterious island here, but there's no likelihood of finding materials at sea there. And that's why we need more Lothar and Seaguard armies, just being all over the place and taking all the islands for the elves. As it should be. And we got one turn, so we're going to switch you to rebuild Lost Splendor. Beautiful. Uh, what's up next? Rodar, I remember you now. And I got busy getting distracted by a million things, so I didn't transfer your units. Uh, we want you to give all of the Sisters of Avalorn, and we want to replace you, 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 and you. And leave the Gate Guard for now, and take the town... Oh, actually, the Gate Guard should be transferred to the Lothran Sea Guard army back there. Hmm. Because Arwenel's final army won't have the Gate Guard. Yeah, fine. Uh, take the gate guard then and transfer the phoenixes. Ah, oh, but if we move you all the way up here, eh, it'll be a couple of extra turns. It's a single Athilmar chariot that we have to send southward, so I think it's not a big enough deal. Anyway, I think that's the way we do it. The other stuff will mostly be deleted. All right, good. Uh, don't. Well, I guess we're keeping these guys, but we don't really need the high elven archers. Do they are at high enough ranks. Hmm. Let me send them up here anyway. And then Larithiel, the Larithiriel, ah, then we can... <laughs> I am impressed with myself every time I actually uh, remember her name. Uh, or remember to pronounce it Larithiriel instead of Larithiel. Because it bamboozled me for like 24 episodes straight. Morella. And do we need you to recruit some more stuff? We can recruit some more basic uh, Dwarfen Rangers. Oh, no, you're maxed out because you're using the High Elven. Eh. I have been wanting to get some Gold Tooth stuff, but what do we have here? Do we have Stone Horns yet? No, still no. We could get a couple Lead Belchers if we wanted from them. A couple of more Fangs. Oh, right, the Gorgers as well. And I got some potential. I'll think about it. For now, just stay here and wait for the inevitable arrival of more Chaos Troops. Architect Emma. Do you need to architect anything? Other than that. Your road is fine, Hag Grief is fine. So I guess not. Alrighty. And Vendrina. Now I guess we can safely land you here, or we can start... Ooh, wait. You are now safe to move beside Erethon, who can't move right now, right? And thereafter, land at the Shrine of Cain and start moving down to Tyrion. And I guess meet up up here. Then we'll send Tyrion to deal with all this. Or maybe up to Bellacor. Unless Arathon does, does it for him. <laughs> oh, he does have a tendency. Uh, taken, I've taken the spotlight from the dragons, from everything. Anyway, that looks like that's all okay. I was hoping to find another battle this turn, but it looks like that's not happening, meaning we need to do the buildings and then go to next turn. First of all, Last Defender says a mission for us. Kill an Arath Doomborn, sure. Uh, Yves you have a mission for us, but your missions are ones we don't care about. But nonetheless, I guess we'll take Nakari. Alright, next up we got a regular Diplo to check. What do we have as options? Camry, Toril Source, still not ready for a non-aggression pact. I don't know what you guys are doing. We're at plus 79. Ah, elves. Why am I not surprised? 
All right, trade agreement. Mountaineers probably won't be alive, so there isn't too much purpose for it. And Camry, and once again, the Cult of Sigmar. Now at war with even more factions and Clan Scryer. I mean, we'll try to bail them out, at least in part because they're friendly with the other lizards, so the lizards will like us more for it, but, uh, wow. Well. I'll just say we can't guarantee to get an army down there. We have a very big empire, and unfortunately... Oh, military alliance with the, uh, uh the Vissenland. Yeah, sure. Uh, we have a very big empire, and unfortunately... Bring me law and lost wisdom, and I... Unfortunately, not enough armies to sort of guard all of the borders. Just like real life. Uh, the Awakened, Wintertooth, and Dreadfleet. Do we want to peace out with any of them? I mean, it would be nice, but the Wintertooth just did take another territory, so they need to be destroyed first. Alright, building, building time. Uh, let's go from the top. Oh, actually, first of all, we're going to move the growers here to the Black Forests. Fortress, rather. The... This place is going to tier... Uh, Okay, move here. Uh, this place is going to tier 5, and we can speed it up by giving another 200 or so growth via the growers to it, and get it to tier 5 sooner. The sooner we get some tier 5s, the sooner we get the uh, units associated therewith. Alright, you guys have moved, let's uh, do all the other stuff. Ancient city of Quintex, you need do nothing, plain of bones, you are fine and will be for a while. You, Lothurn are switching to to militia, but that's fine, and build an elven fairground, at least for now. Ashen Coast? Yeah, sure. Build the elven fairground, and I guess you can switch back to growth now. Alright, Dead Rock Gap. Mm, nothing to build for a while. You're fine growing, you're fine growing. And next up, we got the colonnades at Tor, Serpindar, and Dawn's Light. We'll probably need to wall this place up because it's isolated, and I'm not sure that we're going to have other uh, stuff here. But we'll still build some stuff. Anyway, uh, broken teeth. Ooh, wait. Now you're fine. Broken teeth. We have the Rally Citizen Militia here. Oh, right. Okay. Skycutters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we want to build. Two Frost Heart Phoenixes. These four Phoenixes remaining will go to Teclas with the with seven of the eight Swordmasters, the Skycutters, and the Hawks. Let's see if we can get another Hawk. Twenty-two. How much do we need? Fifty-four. Damn, the Hawks are expensive. My lord, fifty-four. Ah, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we'll get them. We'll get them. It's, uh, it's needed. We need another bird army. And unfortunately, I forgot where we were. I think it was Broken Teeth. All right. Arnheim, let's do you next. You are fine. More like our Arn fine. Uh, Desolation of Asgore. Yes. Build up the Grand Repository here for relatively cheap. And then switch back to growth. Banish Corruption. Uh, West Western Badlands, rather. Not Westland... Urnlands? I don't know. Uh, let's see. I guess Stonemine Tower has to be first, but we'll probably want to reduce the construction costs, because, funnily enough, despite the relatively decent amount of cash coming in, it's just not enough. Alright, Silver Road, you're fine. Keep growing. Tower of Gorgoth, fine for a while. Skelda Delta. Hmm, looks good to me. Iron Coast, you are in recruitment mode, and that's fine as it is. If we have spare money remaining, we'll change it, but I somehow don't think we'll have spare money remaining. Uh, you, I think, will actually switch to growth now. Tiranok, you... I would love to switch you to growth, but we need the money that you're getting us, so yeah. And frankly, if it wasn't for the Confederation debuff, I'd probably be gathering money from a few more territories than we are right now, but, uh, well... Until we're done, we can't do anything about that. Plane of Dogs, I believe you can now switch to Banish Corruption now. Uh, Blightwater... Mm, nothing to build here for a while, so you can banish corruption as well. You can also increase your public order, but it will sort of increase itself over time. Alright, Kalidor, you are fine. We're in the sense that we are not going to switch anything. You need to keep growing so that we can get that, uh, uh, that dragon building. Safari, Barrier Idol, Solid, we can't do anything about. Eastern Border Princes, hello, yes. Definitely pastures, and if... Why did I build an Elven Artisan here? Should have gone for the growth or the colonnade. I think maybe it was already there and then I didn't delete it. I deleted. And we'll get more mileage out of a colonnade or a growth building. 
All right, Western Border Princes, yes, definitely marble and definitely defenses as the rats will inevitably attack us. Uh, Hunted Force, you're fine. At Grief, you are fine and will be for another turn or so. Karak Azul. Eh, keep growing. Unicorn Gate, no. Broken Lands, yes, but next turn. Marshes of Madness, Sunken Kurnark. Not going to invest in you right now, at least not past level 1 stuff. Iron Foothills, you can keep growing. Yes. Nagareth, Tordranel. Earlier I was saying we shouldn't need to bother building anything at Tordranel, but maybe we can... Maybe we can upgrade it. I'll have 4,000 gold, it's a little bit steep. Yeah, just build the growth building for now and then we'll see. As long as it's not collecting income, we shouldn't need to pay. Anyway, Force of Gloom is fine. Valeus Sorrow, yes, let's build you up. And Obsidian Peaks, you are fine as well, or at the very least we can't switch you anyway. And Spite Peak, yes. Wood, Colonnade, and I guess Growth at least for now, but obviously we'll switch this once the place is uh, growing a little bit better. And Death Pass, you are fine as well. Doom Glades. And this is what I usually do between the episodes. I try to keep this to a minimum because obviously this uh, takes up a lot of screen time that ain't fighting. And the bigger our empire grows, the more admin there will be. Really what we need is the materials at sea. Uh, six turns of materials at sea will just completely nullify like 80% of the admin that we have to do for the rest of the campaign. That's how strong it is. Anyway. At least this late into the game. Uh, Alchemist Forever Maze. We're going to trade you away so we don't actually need to build anything here. And then the Road of Skulls, Hargan Nath. In theory, probably the same. But we'll start on the Plaza because we need the reductions. And keep the War Hall because it provides bonus troops. Alright. That looks good to me. Lord now move skipped. Unassigned skill points skipped. Building upgrade available. Nope. Outpost available with Tolzin. How are you? How do you still have Karakazgaraz? And they're at war with all these factions around them, and they haven't lost Karak... Oh! They pieced out with Vlad. Oh, that's why. Hmm. Well, it's not like we have enough, uh... It's like we have enough allegiance with them to recruit their units anyway. Oh, well. To battle Ariel can't build Hawk Riders. A Garrison Lord not moved. Outpost upgrade available. Hero not moved. No. And end turn. And Disciple Tiffian. Apparently I forgot to move you. This is wrong. This is wrong? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I take it he said that because he got interrupted for movement by Disciple Rowan, but... Uh, uh, the <laughs> oh. oh, man, I need, I need that line on, like, a soundboard. That would be great. Alright, uh, Elspeth von Drecken, what you want? You want us to join war against Bellacor? We will, but not right now. I would like to see... Wherefore does the remaining army from Belagar go? If they go south, we'll have to deal with them. And A, hey, the bait worked. And once again, it'll be more work for Bel Uh I... There's some concerning stuff here. There's definitely some concerning stuff. The frickin' Hell Cannon is going to be an issue. And we have to actually deploy in such a way that we can fire on the Hell Cannon and hopefully destroy it immediately. Let's see if we can do so. Go. All righty, for Teclis, uh, not sure about that, but <laughs> once again, here we go. This uh, this poor army with their basic units is once again facing off against some uh, uh, some very scary enemies. Bunch of chosen on the field, of course, Sigvald himself. Lots of stuff to contend with, essentially, and uh, we'll see if we can manage to pull this off. We're gonna do as much damage as we can with Belherithor to start the battle off, trying to get rid of as many of the Chaos Warriors and Chosen, essentially, just to make sure that our units can deal with them a little bit easier, simply because we have little armor piercing. Now, we have Vanguard deployed. The reason that we've kept this army at all in this late into the campaign, I mean, I normally wouldn't have. Mm, they're just replacing them with Lothar and Seaguard instead, but the item that gives this entire army Vanguard deployment is fairly unique, and it does allow us to do things like this 
this. We've deployed our entire army to the flank of the enemy army, which allows us to essentially destroy all their fast movers before the enemy army can react. There is a uh, Hell Cannon out there, which unfortunately does get very hard. A single shot from it takes about 40 HP, 40% 40 HP off of one of our units of archers and 40% off another one. The AI does also have a tendency to switch fire with the uh, Hell Cannons and artillery pieces to uh, disperse uh, the damage done, which is a pretty interesting, uh, uh, pretty interesting behavior from the AI. That said, it should hopefully be destroyed by the Eagle Claw Bolterers, which have been firing at it for uh, 40 seconds straight. It does get another shot off, unfortunately, but does at last get destroyed. And we were just going to have Belherathoi move down there as well. Does look like some chariots, though they are melting away, just barely manage to charge on through our lines of spears and into the archers, while the archers reposition and continue firing on key targets. Key targets in question here are going to be the Chaos Warriors with Halberds and the enemy uh, mage out here. Don't want either of them to close into combat or to drop any spells. And of course, we're getting a decent little bit of help from the Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. We did also keep the Illyrian Reavers back here to guard the Bolt Throwers, which are one of the only things that uh, cannot Vanguard deploy. Uh, our spears are still holding the enemy back, though several of the units have been pretty much destroyed at this point. The spear unit's down to about 25% HP, and the Sliver Slash is active on Siggy, so it's hardly surprising that he's making mincemeat of them. Does look like the Forsaken do manage to charge on through and we'll get into the fight with our uh, with our archers even as blue fires come in from the enemy mage speaking of the enemy mage however at least one of them gets destroyed by a concentrated fire from our units of archers which then immediately switch to this uh, horseman unit which has been firing at Belherathoi for pretty much the entire battle and has started to uh, rack up a little bit of damage. Gotta knock those javelineers out and the archers and the eagle claw bolt throwers will do so with, uh, let's say, a reasonable quickness. Unit of uh, Hounds of Decay has charged forth a scary unit. Our high elves, are, our, one of our units of high elven archers, are backing off. And I was wondering where they were, these summons. I mean, we saw so many demonette summonings from the... Uh, from the Dark Elves, it's weird that we've seen less of them from the Slaneshi, but they've arrived on field at last. Fortunately, Belcarathoi and her noble and the Illyrian Reavers all just uh, rush the demon nets at the same time, surround them, and fortunately, rather quickly, take off about half of their HP. At the very least, the demonettes will thus be unable to uh, dish out enough damage to uh, kill off a unit of archers, though they did damage them. Sigvald's still in the middle of the fray, but we're by and large ignoring him. He's not taking all that much damage, but that's hardly surprising against basic units of spears. Their job is to hold the line while the archers dish out the damage. The Illyrian Reavers, finally in the fray, are now able to chase enemy units down and, like the uh, units of Forsaken here, make sure that they're unable to uh, return to the battle. A unit of Chaos Warriors with great weapons attempting to run away now, but getting slowly brought down by those non-armor-piercing arrows. Out here, there is a unit of Chosen, two units of Chosen with halberds that are still very much in the fight. We've been periodically dropping heels and shields of thorns on top of these units of spears just to try to make sure that they can hold back the Chosen. It is a horrific mismatch in terms of unit quality. That said, at this point, this is the last two units that are on the field, and they are beginning to waver. Our artillery pieces have begun to gun them down by shooting them in the uh, flanks as well. And by the looks of it, with that, the Chosen will break and the archers and spears will be victorious once more. All right, and about three, about three full minutes of the Chosen just fighting. They were taking very little damage to the uh, spears, but once the artillery were, start, were able to start firing into them, uh, we were able to bring them down. Just look at all those arrows just expended and trying to bring down at least a couple of Chosen. 
but it is kind of fun. I mean, this feels appropriate though, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, we don't have armor-piercing archers here, but uh, seeing just hundreds to thousands of arrows uh, break upon the uh, chaos armor of Chosen is the way it should be. Uh, seeing Chosen and things like that melt to a regular, uh, uh, to even heavy arrowhead archers just doesn't feel quite right. Basic arrows, non-enchanted basic arrows, really shouldn't be uh, quite capable of uh, and destroying basic chosen with great ease. So uh, this feels cinematic and appropriate to me, in my opinion. Anyway, with that, Sigvald's army breaks. We will unfortunately not be able to chase Sigvald down, uh, but that's okay. Uh, if you haven't heard, he runs really, really fast. And I can't look at it because I'll just start laughing my head off again. Just like I did in the Archeon campaign, every single episode that we saw Siggy fight. But anyway, with that, the enemy army is broken and most of them uh, will get chased down. And the close victory, fair enough, is ours. Alright, that one took a, a decent bit of effort, I would say. At the very least, we got a bunch of damage to several of our units, but uh, hardly surprising as spears were facing off against frickin' Chosen, and uh, the one of the High Elven Archers took a few volleys, or a couple of volleys, from that Hell Cannon, which still managed to kill off 80 units and get 10,000 damage, despite being focused down by the Eagle Claw Bolt Doors, which were just a little bit too slow uh, to destroy it. Oh well, not a big deal at the very end, I think we're at the end of the day we still kept everybody around and though i would love to heal i think 4080 gold is a little bit too much to turn down so turn it down we won't ransom captives all right siggy's out i don't remember what his defeat trait is but as i recall is it 10 percent physical resistance and something else Maybe. Hmm. I'll have to see. Ooh, parts of Sartosa are fighting Warherd of the Shadow Gave. Interesting. Peace now negotiated between the dwarfs and the... Uh uh, between the dwarfs and the court of Libaros, military alliance between the disciples of Hashut and Ecstatic Legions. Interesting stuff. Alrighty, Luxstone, Pride Assassin. Yeah, it's ten percent physical resistance and also twenty-five percent chance of stealing magic items. That's actually pretty solid. Hmm. I'd love to get the ten percent physical resistance on uh, uh, on Arathon. Oh, I see you've taken Cowork. Now, we would actually like Cowork for ourselves and then this entire province, but I'm willing to bet you're gonna quickly snap these up. Hmm, I'll think about it. I didn't really want to give up Harganeth, but... Ooh, we can't give up Harganeth. Income for post-bad loot plus 10%. If we turn the entire province to super growth, we should still be able to uh, get it up and running. It's just gonna take a while. Anyway... Fortunately, this campaign is... Oh, damn. Somebody's mind was muddled. I don't know whose it was, but uh, frickin' puppets of misrule do have a tendency. Uh, influencer has a great eagle? No. 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 No eagle would associate with you. Uh, just, just get influence. Assault units or... Wait. Hmm... Nah, the growth wouldn't really help us with it. Construction time? Nah, I think it's just assault units. It's fine, it's fine. You're good. Anyway, I'll deal with the influencers between the episodes and have them uh, have them take stuff. I do notice that these guys are all moving towards Blacklight Tower now, including Kotep. And Larishian, are you able to reclaim the monoliths? Yes, indeed you are. I right, go reclaim that. You're not even supposed to be out here. You're supposed to be at sea. And I'm sure you'd love to return to sea, so... Not resolve and occupy. We bring order. All right, audacious, and you bring order. Good for you. Uh, collect income. No, we're just gonna trade this away. Frankly, we probably don't actually care about it at all. But anyway, hmm. If this guy takes too many of these territories, the unfortunate aspect of it will be that uh, it'll probably be difficult to trade him too much stuff. On the other hand, once again, I I don't want any more territory up here in the north. Other than Harganath. 
man, these, these Dark Elves really hate us. I was hoping to eventually upgrade Nagarond to enough of a degree to uh, and get these Dark Elves to like us, but I fear that that might not happen. The plus 100 relationship that we get out of the Occupied Black Tower, it's just not enough. If it was plus 300, yeah, maybe something. But anyway, Imrik, is Scarby shown himself? I don't see him in Morkheim, I don't see him in Def Gorge. Where is Scarby? I want the duel. That's what I want, but I don't see him. Hmm. Well, either way, you're going to take Def Gorge real quick for us. Like so, and it won't kill the chariots, right? Right, game? You won't kill the chariots? Uh, hmm. I'm wondering whether we should fight this. On the one hand, it will be a hilariously easy battle. On the other hand, we haven't seen Emmerich fight in a bit. And I'll think about it, but I might save this for next episode. Also, two territories remaining. Other than the one Emmerich's about to take, and... Hopefully Scarby shows up before we destroy him. I think he has a faction-wide defeat trait as well. That would be really nice, but, uh, well, anyway. Anyway, uh, this would all be Cornate Corruption. I'm hoping that we can cross the river here and then attack this next turn without taking the attrition, or just do it anyway. I mean, they've got solid defenses here. Yeah, out of these battles, this one we probably would want to fight, though it does have the defensive garrison, and thus we wouldn't be able to do it cinematically, which is a shame. But it is what it is. Defender of the Phoenix Throne. And I should do. Guardian I should actually give Throne. you the Thilmar Chariots. As you, well... I was just gonna say because you're gonna travel close to Emmerich, but you might not. That might not be true. I might be lying. Uh, anyway, I guess you're gonna go down here, suffer attrition for a turn. As there's no guarantee that... But the looks of it, you won't be able to cross the river. And... Thus might not be able to reach... Morgheim. On the other hand, an extra turn won't change anything anyway, so just, just go this way, just go this way, it doesn't matter. Alright, and back from the top, Feyadien, you are not able to reach Migdalvin Galbarak in a single turn, but that's alright. You can cr you can cross the river, and also suffer attrition, I assume. Yeah, no way to avoid it, but that's alright. We need to take one of these next turn, then we need to summon Alistar and... Uh, get him on field. Alrighty, till now. Karakarn, what do we have here? No defensive garrison, but ooh, they've got solid stuff. This actually would be a challenge to a till now. I like it. I like it a lot. Alright, do we have time? We don't, really. We don't. Heroic victory, yeah, they got a ton of dwarfs, and uh, you gotta... This is... This might actually be lying in our favor. The thing is, we have no way to bring the towers down, and on top of that, the dwarfs are heavily armored, and our... Uh, our sea dogs, of our <laughs> Lothar and Sea Guard in general, don't have armor piercing in terms of their attacks. Or at least not a lot of it. And thus, I think this will be a fairly difficult fight. Hmm. It may even warrant battering rams or siege towers if I'm not too lazy. But anyway, I think we'll save that for next episode. And I think this one would just probably be too easy. The dragons would... Let's face it, the dragons would wreck everything here. I'm going to quick save this, however, just in case it destroys the chariots, because I don't trust the game. It nearly killed our noble, but the chariots are fine. <laughs> All right, uh, take Def Gorge, Barded Steed for a Rodar, and Def Gorge is ours. We need not these things. Huh. Oh, the rally field. Nah, nah. Well, we're, we're building one up there anyway. And then there were two soon to be one. We also have to knock out these guys shortly, but we can send Darwinel to uh, burn them or have Michaela burn them. Anyway, folks, with that, I'm going to call the episode here. Lothar and the Skycutters and other stuff. Soon we're going to build a few more dragons with the recruiter Zamdilla as the dragons are ready for construction <laughs> ready for construction in the fortress of Vorag as well gonna well this is all kind of a shambles right now and we'll try to fix that we'll try to hunt down Nakari and Belakor with Arathon who is approaching and hopefully assure up the donut unfortunately Torkarali has fallen and it has a pretty great landmark so we need to uh, punish Belakor for it and hopefully destroy him before uh, he takes Tor Ivares we oh I guess I shouldn't have deleted those units, because now we have Pete Hawkins here, eh? 
Well, it is what it is. I might have to temporarily give uh, Tyrion these guys and just see if he can handle all of this uh, by himself. Anyway, interesting times to come as we still have clearly plenty to do with this campaign. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. Remember that once the uh, once engagement drops a su sufficient amount, we'll move this to the second channel, uh, which is Ruinous Archive. Uh, just mentioning it as a so few of you sometimes don't. Uh, well... I should be posting it periodically. You know what? But when we move it, before we move it, I'll post a link to it in the description or comments below. So, yeah, anyway, more work to come. Stay tuned. All glory, etc. And thanks for watching.